we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, Madeo, walk on. Why don't y'all stop what you're doing right now? Right at this moment, go like, subscribe, follow us, share us on all social media platforms. Anywhere you can find Boss Talk Podcast 101, that's us. All right? But definitely, um, y'all need to go ahead and sign up for a membership because that's where you're going to see our full-length interviews, on clip, uncensored, on everything. Exclusive on YouTube membership. Thanks in advance. Man, hey, man, this this, this guy right here, guys, Y'all, I know y'all... Uh, uh, always excited when we do this show, but this is on a serious note, man. This guy I seen on the news, man, and it was crazy to me because this story right here was breathtaking, man. Um, Johnny, breathtaking? Breathtaking, just to see what happened. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Uh, Johnny Abney is in the building, man. Welcome to Boss Talk 101. I appreciate y'all. appreciate y'all for inviting me and let me come share my story. Man, you know, uh, your story need to be told, man, because what happened to you could be happening to others and and you know maybe they didn't know somebody but good thing that people tagged into your situation and we're gonna get all the way into it but what happened to you was a misfortunate situation uh that really impacted you and your daughter yeah, and I, I i just really you know what i mean um I commend you because you kept a level head during the process where a lot of people might have flew off the handle you know uh, and and what we're referring to is basically um, you having an issue with coming home. And I'm going to let you tell the story. Uh, and when you came home, you came home to something that you never would have believed could happen. Couldn't imagine. Wow. And uh, Miss Jamaica, I shared the story with you and, mm -hmm. and you seen what had happened. And we said, man, we want to tackle this one. So just because you look like us. So we want to make sure that. You know, you're hurt, man, and I apologize for even it happening, man. And your precious daughter, I met her, man. She's a breath of fresh air, man. Appreciate and I know, that. you know, I've, I've had a liking to people who raising a child, man. I think that's so deep, man. So let's get into it, Johnny, man. So what happened? Uh, what day was that on? Uh, July 25th, 2023. July? Um, well, I arrived back home at 9 p.m. to a, a completely empty apartment. Where was your daughter at this time? Oh, uh, she was with her mom. We have split custody where I have her half the week, and then she's with me the other half of the week. Just so happened, luckily, like she wasn't there because it was definitely a traumatizing experience. And what time did you leave your house that day? Uh, around eight, eight a.m., eight, nine a.m., somewhere in there, like I usually do, just a regular day at work. So Everything. you work a long shift. Yeah, well, usually I'm there during the day because I own two businesses, but today just. I don't know. Everything aligned up for it to play out the way it did. I had an unusually long day that day and came back to an empty apartment. Here, a TV stand with the TV. This was my daughter's snack drawer. It was a closet full of clothes. Everything gone. So what happened to have this house empty? Go ahead and tell us the story. Well, yeah, like I said, it all started on July 25th. And um, normal day, I left for work. Normal day, arrived back home around 9 p.m. When I realized my door was unlocked, which was kind of weird, I was like, maybe because uh, I stayed in a 26-story high-rise in uh, downtown Deep Ellum area, and I'm, it, it, I'm, I'm a definitely a security-type person, so I figured I didn't unlock it, but I was just like, oh, maybe I left the door unlocked. So I go to unlock the door, and to my surprise, like, a completely empty apartment. So my first thinking, like, I know in Dallas we had a, a story with, like, uh, Botham John where, you know, you got off mm -hmm. on the wrong floor. So I stayed on the 23rd floor. I'm like, maybe I'm on the 22nd floor, you know, some type of mistake. So I go check my, um, you know, the numbers the number. on my door. And sure enough, it was my apartment. So at that point, like, my whole world just turned upside down, my head spinning. And just that's when I started trying to investigate and see what happened. Like, did what, you think it was a robbery or did you think it was... It definitely crossed my mind, but I'm like, if somebody could rob me from the 23rd floor and take all my furniture, all my furniture. yeah, not, not right. just valuable stuff, because I had like nice stuff at the front door, you know, mm -hmm. the design and stuff like that. I would expect that type of stuff to be gone, but not my couch, my bed completely taking down my mm -hmm. daughter's bed, TVs and everything. So I just, it, it blew my mind. So what was the next step that you did? Um, the next step is, uh, I know it's only one way to really, in this building, to get like heavy items down, which that's the freight elevator. They have mm -hmm. like three elevators for the common people that, you know, that's coming into the apartment, the guests. 
and then they have a separate elevator that you move in, move out. So I knew whatever happened, it had to go on that elevator. So I rode the elevator down all the way to the the ground floor, which is um, where you move in, and it's the dumpster, and they have a pet park. So that was my first place in going, and that's where, like, the first time I witnessed all my property just being in the trash. So you saw all of that before you even spoke to anybody? Yeah. You, you saw it in the trash? I saw it there. Okay, and what was your thoughts at that time? I'm like, what the heck? Like, I'm still thinking it's a dream. I'm like, this is like a crazy nightmare dream. Like, I, I'm just waiting to wake up type thing. And, and not only your stuff, but also your daughter's things. Both as well. Everything in the house was pretty in much, uh, in the apartment, was pretty much just wiped clean and taken out. A TV stand with the TV. This was my daughter's snack drawer. It was a closet full of clothes. Everything gone. Yeah, like nothing a, left. Nothing left. Like a make ready in one day. Like just completely empty apartment. I left to a completely furnished apartment and came back 12 hours later to a completely empty apartment. Nothing. And is this apartment, this not the same apartment. I know you made a reference to what had happened to... Both them John. Yes, but this wasn't. No, nah, it, yeah. it's it's down in the same this area. This is downtown. Yeah, yeah, downtown. It's like not too far away, but in the downtown area. So I know just with like with those downtown apartments, like it's a lot of tough. the floors are like similar. So yeah, I was like maybe I got off on the wrong floor, but it definitely was. And these home. are some nice apartments. Nice apartments. I was paying twenty nine hundred a month just for okay. a two bedroom for me and my daughter. Mm. So really nice apartments, nice amenities. I like the area, everything. So like something like this, this was one of the reasons I stayed in this type of area, just so I, certain things you, you don't have, have to, to deal worry with about. It. Yeah, right. Wow, for you to um, come home and then have to experience that, you go downstairs. Where's your daughter at at this time? She's with her mom. With her mom. Okay, yeah. she had a, okay. So you go down. You at the trash dumpster. You see your stuff. What's the next move for you? Well, I started trying to figure out the leasing. I know they had a leasing agent on hand, and the, oh, we have a 24-hour concierge. It's like, if we have any problems, you just go downstairs, and concierge usually handle, you know, anything we need from sending people up to sending food up. So those are my next two steps, trying to get in contact with the on-hand leasing agent and the concierge and call the police, of course. So once I go to call the police, um, the police arrive, and I'm making my police report, that, um, like, right before that, actually, the leasing agent came down, and uh, that's when they made the, they realized that they made a mistake. Like, once I told them my apartment number, they was like, oh, you know, they, they realized that it was a big mistake. So and what did they, what, when they realized it's a big mistake, what did they say to you? How did they, what, what They what just did told you? me that they were supposed to be cleaning out uh, apartment 2312, and I stayed in 2311. So it's like literally next door. So I don't, I'm not sure if it was the paperwork, them sending it to the maintenance crew or the maintenance crew just, you know, made a mistake, mistake either way. But like I say, they end up coming into the wrong apartment, which I was aware that the neighbors um, had been evicted or moved out or anything because I had a pretty nice apartment. But they had the bigger unit of my apartment, which is like a thirty five hundred dollar a month two bedroom with the um uh, the, uh, what is it like the corner suite where you got the floor to ceilings all the way around so like I, I I had seen their apartment before so I was aware that they left but I definitely didn't expect anything like that to you know what the with. craziest thing is the fact that you've been and you've been paying your rent every single month every single month it, you know that Tyler Perry movie where that young lady um and her daughter she was in the apartment and they were trying to evict her and he the she, good deeds good, good deeds. deeds I might have missed that and one. um <laughs> They, she told her landlord, I'll have your money by the end of the day. Yeah. And um, she was going to, but he put out all her stuff on the street and everything. People, neighbors, everybody was trying to take up her stuff. And yeah. her daughter, because she had a little girl too, yeah. take her stuff. So she drove up and she saw all of that. And she was so mad because she had stashed money in her mattress at that time too. And they stole mm, all everything. of that. All of that so, was gone. So they urinated. Somebody was urinating on you. Or it could have been a dog. dog. Yeah, it was somebody's dog. Probably like I said, it's right by a pit park. So right with that dumpster is people walk right past it. And, mm -hmm. you know, they just kind of let their dogs just... Do it down there, down there. Everybody got dogs and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it was definitely, yeah, just a crazy experience. And and so you, once you get, you know, basically comfortable with the fact of I am screwed. They've taken all my stuff, put it by this dumpster. What do you do? You do you you can't you didn't stay there that night, so now you got to find somewhere to well, go. Well, I end up like just I didn't even sleep that night. Like just to be honest with you, they um. 
like say when it first happened, the leasing agent and the concierge, they were like overly apologetic. Like, you know, we're going to call the overnight maintenance and just call in uh, them to bring what's left back to your apartment. So after everything's back at the dumpster, they brought back what was left damaged. And uh, like I said, what was left back up to the apartment. So they didn't finish doing that till maybe 12, 1 in the morning before we could just get everything that was left back to the apartment. So from that point, I'm just like I say, I, my mind was just blue, you know. Just I'm I'm kind of in the daze at that point. Wow, I just really like I said, I couldn't imagine uh, you know going return to our home and everything being gone like that. And the the did you at that point? Because I seen on there where they said that you was not a tenant or you was not on the lease. Yeah. What was that all about? Well, my girlfriend stayed there originally, and she ended up moving out of state and. She ended up telling me, like, helping both of us. Like, I like the apartment, and she didn't want to break her lease, so it was easier for me to just take over the lease. And, were, you know, were y'all still together? Uh, At first. At first. How long have you been staying in an apartment? I've been, uh, like, less than a year, eight months, something eight like Eight months? That. And yeah. for the f how long during that time have you been paying the rent solely? Uh, the whole eight months. The whole, the whole eight months? months. Okay. Yeah, the whole okay. eight months. It's just been just, just me and my daughter. Like, it's that's our place. Like, she moved in. It's just been us. And when you pay the rent, you sign your name. Yeah, and what, on there, that, like it's under you know a court case, so I can't say certain okay. stuff. But um, like I said, they were definitely aware that I was in the apartment. I I right. handed them the the uh, money orders specifically right. so they, to them. They, they knew it was you. Yeah, definitely, okay. definitely. Wow, and and so now they're okay. The because I I was looking at the 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 girlfriend. Um, not a uneasy fix to pick up the phone and call and just say, "Hey, you know, we, you know, that's my place. It shouldn't have yeah. happened." Did uh, did any of that happen? No, she definitely reached out. But she reached out yeah, to him. She definitely did, but at that point, like I think they once they, they were trying to find a way, a way to, to get out. Yeah, they was trying to find a loophole, a loophole to get out of the situation. But like they, like say, the first day they were overly apologetic. They were like, "Come back the next morning, figure out what's missing, and we'll discuss it." But the next day, just with corporate people, like it was a whole different person than what I was talking to the night before and right. that morning. Like, I'm not sure if they talked to hires up or lawyers or anything. That's but exactly what happened. Yeah, so they they pretty much tried to shut me out. Like, they, I think their plan was to get me off the property as quick as possible, and maybe they can, you know, pray and hope that, you know, no evidence of this ever happened. But to their notice, they their leasing agent admitted everything on the police report, so it's not even a question of debate, mm. you know. So like. I just don't understand why they don't want to make me whole at this point. Like, it's been viral, it's been everything, but it, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it, it blows my mind. And were you able to come up with a list of all the things that were missing? Yeah, definitely. Like I say, with my lawyer, we have a def, uh, definitely a list of damages and everything like that. My daughter's baby pictures, my grandmother's urn, just a lot of irreplaceable stuff. I was stuff. about to say things that can't be replaced. Yeah, definitely. So clothing like it was right before school time this happened like two weeks before her birthday as well so like i say i'd have to buy school clothes over again and just re-establish myself as a parent again luckily you, know? you had a job no definitely yeah i own a business so i wasn't all the way stuck out but it's still just imagine you leaving home from one day for right, work right. and a tornado swipes up your whole house so exactly you know, even though you wake up that next day and you're thankful but you know i still definitely like starting over and took a big loss it's the things that can't be re replaced is really the things that yeah. hurt the most and it's just kind of like a ptsd type thing like you know just so much stuff being snatched up under you quickly like it just like some days i can't sleep it's on my mind like just the rapid change of lifestyle if that makes sense like cause i have a really nice apartment and uh, being the situation i am now is definitely like not a comfortable one it makes you i would assume <laughs> Because for the main fact you picked there because you're thinking that this wouldn't happen and then that happens, it makes you wonder like where can you even live yeah. that something like that cannot happen. You definitely, know what I mean? Definitely, definitely. Like I say, I've always liked the downtown life. That's like my second, third apartment downtown. Like I like the come and go life, just me being a single dad. When right. I have my daughter, I can easily step outside and enjoy myself the bars I feel the, safe yeah mm -hmm. I and mean, just like bars and stuff I don't have to worry about driving back home like mm -hmm. that I can just walk back home from getting something to eat or going to a bar and stuff so I've always liked the downtown life if, if that makes sense how long did it take for you to tell your daughter about what had happened oh um, probably the next day like I say with so much stuff missing I couldn't hide it too long I just glad she didn't see it 
that night or you right. know just I don't know how I would even had her to you know being able to take it like I think it would have been even more traumatizing than that it is already. Right. Yeah. Right. So what did what was her first response? Um, of course, some of her favorite items and clothes and stuff being gone, you know, just wondering how I was going to fix, you know, school being coming up. So just, you know, as a, as a parent, they don't really know it, all the, the, the stress and stuff you hold on your shoulders. They just expect you to make it happen, you know, so mm -hmm. she just kind of wanted to know how I was going to fix it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Man, I apologize for what happened, man. I'm just uh, definitely, um, man, if there's anything I can do, anything. You know, just let me know. You know what I'm saying? I know you guys probably trying to figure out where you're going to stay. Yeah. You know, trying to figure out where, what you're going to do. You know, it's been two months now, but people don't realize when you shift somebody's living condition like that, it pretty much puts you on a place where you having to try to figure it out, start all over again, do something to try to take care of your daughter, getting her to school properly, you know, mm -hmm. having a mind state to even keep going in your business. What type of business uh, do you have? I got a trucking business and okay. a commercial maintenance business, so... Those are my two business. But luckily, like I said, you were saying we're starting over. Like I got a strong family, so you know, I definitely have people that support me. You know, but me just be, kind of being a um, an independent yeah, person. independent type of person. Like I don't like relying on people. Mm -hmm. I'm always kind of stood on my own too. Like don't like asking type of person. Like so, just me being in that position. That's one of the most uncomfortable things. Just having to kind of rely on people. You know, when I know it's not necessarily my fault of why I'm in this position. Um, so when the day when it happened, the next, how soon after it happened, did they um, tell you you had to get off the property? Well, they gave me a three day notice the second day. The first day, like I say, they, they handed me an application and they was like, if I sign this application, they'll expedite it to, you know, to go through the process to see if I can be on the lease. But once you just made a mistake like that, like I didn't want to give you my information because, like I say, I've already seen that it can. Now I, I guess I had foresight that it, this could be a nasty situation, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I wanted to resolve my issue first, you know, just before I give you anything like socials or my full name or anything like that. Just because, like you said, you, I know it's a lot of you know schemes and scams and stuff right. like that. So I'm not gonna just give you my information like that, mm -hmm. just so. And once you didn't do that, what happened next? What did the they say? They tried to give me a three-day notice that Friday, which is basically to get off the property. That's the next day? Yeah, that Friday. This happened on a Wednesday. On a Wednesday, so two days. Yeah, okay. two days afterwards, which they um, they tried to give me a three-day notice to get off the property for an unauthorized occupant, which, mm -hmm. I mean, those are the proper steps. If you do want to get somebody off your property, you have something called an eviction process, which mm -hmm. a lot of people confuse. Once they hear this story, they, like, they tell me that I don't have rights or anything like that or breaking the lease gives you the right to break the law, which is far from the opposite. You know, like luckily in America, we have a thing called the eviction process. Like, you know, if, if I was breaking the lease, it's still a process you have to go through before you can illegally enter my property and basically steal my property. Right. Yeah. So. Mm. Wow. I think that's like, like that's what people don't, you know, you, 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 you got uh, people that just chime in, you know, um, but they don't know the process. That's the, pro that's the purpose of getting an attorney, somebody that can look through, filter through the issues and try to understand legally what you're, you know, what's, what can and cannot be done to somebody. No, so uh, your attorney, I'm pretty sure, is working on this to try to get rectification. But I, I commend you, like I said, having a daughter, being a single father and trying that. to understand the algorithm of making it through the process of dealing with this day to day. Definitely, and I, I knew like I had a case before anybody else told it. When I told this story to a lot of people in the beginning, they were like, they tell me just that, you know, just I'm in the wrong, which like I say, I knew I wasn't in the wrong, you know, like the least thing was minor, you know what I'm saying? They came into my apartment on a mistake on their end, you know, so like that was one of my biggest challenges, just, you know, certain times in my life, I just got to follow my own mindset, just listen to people, they can kind of, point you in different directions and they were just telling me that I didn't have a case and turns out I have a very strong case. But so, um, but it was friends and family who were telling you or people that you knew who were telling you you didn't have a case, right? Yeah. It wasn't any professionals. No, no. The main thing with that, like, um, with the, the trick with that, like if I would have represented myself, instead of getting an attorney, it was a certain limit that I couldn't pass and my damages had far exceeded, exceeded that. Exceeded that. Yeah, so okay. the next thing was just like, just getting an attorney, you know, mm -hmm. so just that can actually represent me, you know, cause I had all the facts as far as them on camera admitting it, 
uh, they admitted in a police report and there's no paperwork of them any eviction process before that before they entered in see the reason why apartment. I asked you that question was for the main fact that people let other people discourage them from moving forward with certain issues no, you know what I mean so I would always say if you can get legal advice um, just go and ask a question do I have a case yeah. and then take from there if you don't have a case then you don't have I, a case and leave all that. yeah I was I was definitely like legal aid talking to different attorneys just trying to find the best attorney because like I said me being black going against a corporation I knew like I had to have somebody that was really like into my case or you know just when I wouldn't just gonna hire anybody you know just to pick up my case because like you say I know how the court system works you know is it, it, you could lose your case before you even get into court if you don't have the right people you know behind mm -hmm. you so that was my main challenge is just trying to find somebody that really wanted to defend me for and my why case. Why did you choose this lawyer? Um, He was referred to me by somebody really of prestige if I can say okay. I'm not sure if I can disclose. No I wouldn't yeah. even yeah, okay, so. well, that's good. Wow. I thank God for it, man. It, it seems like you're figuring it out, but it's just a, still an uphill battle to try to get your life back together after going through an experience like you just did, man. Mm, so, it, I mean, if people want to reach out or, or holler at you, how can people, if they wanted to try to reach out to give you some help, yeah. whether it be um, whether it be uh, legal, or whether it be I had issues and, and I know exactly where you're coming from, um, what, who would, you know, how would they get a hold of you? Uh, I recently just made an Instagram and a TikTok just like say with the story going viral that was one of the main things that helped my case which I figured I knew a case but just with so much exposure like a lot of people just reposted and stuff like that so I made a, a, a Instagram and a TikTok the Instagram is one Trey T-R-E-Y 0223 and then I think the TikTok is just Trey T-R-E-Y 0223 man have you had a lot of people reach out to you already yeah no definitely like say with the story being as big as it is like i went from kind of like an under the radar type person to people just kind of reaching out a lot and stuff like that um one thing though like somebody had been like making a uh a fake, fake, fake go for yeah. me yeah. yeah so that's another reason i just want to kind of keep the story going because like i say with me being in this situation with my daughter i'll be dang you know somebody scamming off my name right and, and it's not really me and you have no GoFundMe accounts at I all? I have one afterwards. Like, we made one afterwards, but the, that one had already kind of took legs of its own. And, you know, so people think that's the actual page to go to. And so what is your like, GoFundMe account? Uh, if you type in my first name, Johnny, J-O-H-N-N-Y, Abney, A-B-N-E-Y, and it's created by Kimberly Garner, which is my mother. She was the one that made the, uh, the GoFundMe, and it's titled Family Who, Who Had All the Belongings Trashed. Like okay. That. But the other one is just... Uh, like he has a, a fake picture of the interview picture, just a crop picture, but I actually put a picture with my daughter just, you know, thinking people would think it's more real, but I guess it's had the opposite effect. Did like, you report the fake I, one to I, the... Me and my lawyer have reported it, but I guess GoFundMe is just kind of taking their time with it. So mm. all I can do is just wait. But my main thing is just the case. Like I say, me just being an independent person, like I don't really try to just blast the GoFundMe or anything like that. Right, just right. Like I say, no. It's kind of embarrassing for me anyway. Just like a lot of people in the city know me anyway. Like I've always done pretty pretty well right. for myself. So my name being attached to any type of GoFundMe like that, like that's definitely not something. Yeah, yeah. Hey, things happen though, man. Like I say, life experiences happen. You know that you're being honest and that you, you, you know, you're on up and up. Something like that tragically happens. Um, that's along the lines of losing your stuff in a house fire and all that right. other stuff. Just sometimes tragic, you know, times call for, you know, measures that, that you're just not used to. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, you just... think you, of... You just, how many, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> 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 just, um, just, just, um, man, don't, don't take, you know, don't take it uh, like, like it's something to be ashamed of because it's definitely not and it's a place where any of us could end up anybody yeah. me you uh family other family members just that's what that's what this world is created upon helping each other no, the, the good people stand up and rock out with the no. ones who you no, know no, god no. is the one pull everything together no, no definitely and i just like I say my main thing is just i want them to pay like they like i don't say that to my terms they violated me you know like just entering my property the way they did and stuff like that so that's my main thing if i can get any resolution in this case like i want them to pay you know but i definitely appreciate anybody that does want to help anything like that 
But you think about how many people, it just shows how many people actually care. No, you know, because if people didn't care or didn't have it to give, they wouldn't even try to. You no, know what I mean? Definitely. So I'm happy that you did mention that there is a fake one out there because people are giving wholeheartedly and to know that it might be going to the wrong person for the wrong reasons. No, you know what I mean? You don't want that to happen. And me just kind of being like a, a low-key person, like I say, I'm not really into social media and stuff like that. So the story going viral and just like seeing how many, like how much my story did impact people, you know, like just reading the comments and stuff, it kind of blew my mind because like I say, I'm kind of like a just a, if you don't know me, you don't, you don't know me type of person. Like, I'm just kind of out the way, if that makes right. sense. Oh, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Appreciate you, guys. I appreciate you. Uh, I want to say Trey. That's my son. <laughs> Your son's name. Yeah, my I go by name. Trey. Most people know me by Trey, Trey but legally yeah. Johnny, Johnny Abney. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> man, check it, man. Hey, man. Mm -hmm. Listen, man. Hey, man. I hope you guys uh, are tap in, man. Uh, Johnny's a good guy. I'm glad I got to meet this young man. And uh, if it's any way you guys can uh, link up and uh, you, you heard the information, uh, go look him up, man. Uh, if it ain't but to say, hey, man, keep on pushing, man. Uh, make sure you guys uh, rock out with uh, Johnny Abney, man, a.k.a. Trey, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out. <laughs>